Hi, and welcome to OpenLC Solutions. Today, we're going to be tackling 2012 Paper 1, Question 5, which is all about functions. In this question, we're given a diagram that's showing a graph of this function f, so it's a, you can tell it's a quadratic just by looking at it. We're also told a graph of another function g is a straight line, and we're given two points uh, on this line, so we can hopefully be able to graph it. What we know is when you see something like this, you have the x-coordinate inside the bracket there and the y-coordinate there. So one of our coordinates is minus 1, minus 6, and the other one is 3, 6. So where, where are they? There's minus 1, minus 6 there. There's one point, and we also have 3, 6, which is there. And we have to draw not just those two points, but the entire graph. And since we're told that G is a straight line, we can actually just plot it by joining a line through these two points. So we can go like that. And there we have this straight line. We can call that G. And that represents the entire function. In part b, we're asked to use the graphs to find the two values of x for which g of x equals f of x. And since we know that this represents the output, in other words, the y-coordinate of anywhere along the function, the question is, where do these two have the same y-coordinate? Well, let's see if we can find them. There's one there. And there is another one there. It's the intersection points of the graphs are where one function is equal to the other function. And we have to use these two points to find the values of x, for which is the case. So what are the, the x values of these two points? We are supposed to draw a line from each of these points to the x-axis to, to find out where that is. And just to show you know what you're doing, you do a little arrow as well. Um, so there's the first one, there's x equals 0, and the second one is over here, so you draw a line straight down. Do a little arrow to make sure you show what you're doing. And there's the other x-coordinate, x equals 5. So x equals 0 and x equals 5 are the two answers that we get for this. And make sure you get two answers for this because they specifically mention that you need to get two. We're then given a little bit more information about these two functions. We're told that uh, g of x is given by this form ax plus b, which ho hopefully you already know is the general form for a linear function. And we're told the general form for f as well. It's x squared plus px plus q, which you should know, hopefully, is the general form for a quadratic. We're told the graph of f crosses the x-axis at minus 1 and 3. So you can see that that's the case. There's minus 1 and there's 3. With that information, we should be able to find out what a, b, p, and q are. And then we have to use that information to solve the equation g of x equals f of x. And hopefully, we end up with the same answers that we had in part b. So the easier one to figure out is probably g, because we already know two points, which we were given at the very beginning of the question, minus 1, minus 6 and 3, 6. Now we're given the function for g of x is ax plus b, and we know two coordinates already, minus 1, minus 6, and 3, 6. Using that, we should be able to get uh, some, some equations out of this. The first equation where I put in the, the first point is going to be minus 6 equals minus a plus B. This is replacing g of x with the y-coordinate and replacing the x with the x-coordinate. I do the same with the second point, 3, 6, and so I end up with 6 equals 3a plus b. And these are now uh, two equations with two variables, and so to solve this you need to do simultaneous equations. I think the easiest one to get rid of, the easiest one to eliminate probably b, if I multiply that by minus 1, then my equation 1 is going to become a 6 equals a minus b. I can then add those two together. My b's cancel each other out, and so I get 12 equals 
for a, and so a is equal to 3. And with that, I can work out what b is. Let's say I put it back into equation 1. Then I got minus 6 equals minus 3 plus b, using this new information that a is 3. And so bring the 3 over the other side, or add 3 to both sides, you get minus 3 equals b. Next, we need to figure out what p and q are. And you could do this with simultaneous equations as well. That's totally valid. There is a slightly quicker way of doing it, and it's using these two roots that were given here. You should know, hopefully, that um, a quadratic can be formed from its roots by converting them into factor form. So if, if one of the roots is at x equals minus 1, then the factor is going to be x plus 1. And if the other root is 3, then the factor form of that is x minus 3. And so we can multiply all this out and we'll actually get the equation f. So we're going to get x by x minus 3 plus 1 by x minus 3. That's x squared minus 3x plus x minus 3. So that's x squared minus 2x minus 3. And so that tells us that p is the coefficient of x, so that has to be a minus 2. q is the constant, so that has to be minus 3. Now that's still not actually the question finished because we still don't know where g and f are equal to each other. To do that, we have to make this equation g equals f with our new a, b, p, and q's and solve that equation. That will tell us where the two are equal to each other. So we get that going. We say that g of x equals f of x. We worked out that g of x, was, it was already ax plus b. We know a is 3, so that's 3x. b was minus 3, so it becomes a minus 3. f of x we know is x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now we can solve this, so we need everything on one side. Let's say, put it on the right-hand side, so we end up with an x squared. Subtract the 3x uh, from the left-hand side, so you subtract from the right-hand side as well, and you get minus 5x. And lastly, uh, you need to add a 3 to the left side, so you add a 3 to the right-hand side, and so there's no constant left anymore. Then we can solve this by factorization, so if there's an x common in here. So you end up with x times x minus 5. And so we get two cases. And so that gives us two answers. We get case 1. The first item in this product equals 0. That's just x, so we could say x equals 0. And case 2. The second item in this product, x minus 5 equals 0, in which case x has to be now, we already know, or we, we have a, a decent idea of what the answer to this should be because of part b. And for that we got x equals 0 and x equals 5. And so those are the same answers we come up with in part c, and that's a pretty good indication that we've done it right. So, thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I'll talk to you in the next episode.